Now we are going to take a look at e-commerce valuation and how the unique characteristics of e-commerce businesses fit into a valuation model. The challenge with the e-commerce business is not in creating the financial model, but in adapting the business drivers to address a very different type of business when compared particularly to a bricks and mortar firm. The structure of the model is shown here. We need to focus on the e-commerce business assumptions and the customer metrics to show how these differ from more traditional models. The income statement, balance sheet and cash flow and the valuation are very similar. The supporting schedules are very similar, but it's in the customer metrics and in the business assumptions where the uniqueness to e-commerce particularly comes out. Now this approach can be used to value an e-commerce company, an internet business, a software as a service business, or indeed a website. We're going to walk through the key e-commerce valuation metrics one by one, and then at the end, I'm going to show you the model I've created for you that will make this much, much easier for you. So bear in mind, you've got a model coming up, um, which you can download um, with this lecture, but let's explain the metrics first, and then I'll show you how the model works. The first one to look at is monthly unique visitors. Now, traffic is the lifeblood of internet businesses. We want to know how many unique visitors come to the site each month. This is, if you like, the top of your sales funnel. Now, this can be um, a result of you know, search engine optimization, which is basically earned traffic, organic traffic, or advertising, which comes from paid traffic. The customer conversion rate is the rate at which visitors are converted into customers. The formula for it is the signups per month divided by the monthly unique visitors per month. And note that this one is unique visitors. This conversion may be measuring an opt-in to an email list in return for a lead magnet or even a small sale. Bear in mind that different companies measure conversion in different ways, so you need to get your mind around that. You have to get your visitors taking action in some way in order to get them over this conversion threshold. The bounce rate is the measurement of people who arrive at your site and leave almost immediately. You measure it by the number of visitors who leave without taking any action divided by the total number of site visitors. So this isn't unique site visitors, this is the total number of site visitors. Basically, they arrive at your website take no action, and then are lost to you as customers. Although it's possible you might cookie them or tag them with a Facebook pixel so that you can reach them later with advertising. These are single interaction visits, and you divide it by, the, as I said, the total number of site visitors. The range for a bounce rate can range from 20%, which is low, to up to 80%, which is very high. The average order value is the... Um, Average order, so it's total revenues from orders divided by the number of orders placed in a period. Clearly a critical metric. Basically, you've got the customer to the, um, the site. They've cre you know, created a, a, a transaction. They've bought something. And you want to know how much per customer, per order, they are actually contributing. Clearly, the more money you extract from them dictates the level of revenues and ultimately the profits. Monthly active users measures the number of all users who have logged into the website in a month and actually are doing something. The important factor here is that users are active rather than just um, having a long subscriber list who never engage because ultimately they won't spend money. The average revenue per user, which is the ARPU, which is a really important metric, and the ARPU is a, an acronym you will hear, is the revenue divided by the number of active users in a month. And this takes into account non-paying subscribers as well. It's a very useful metric for internet and for e-commerce businesses. The monthly recurring revenue really makes a difference to the value of your business. This is the total of all revenue that renews on a monthly basis. It's, if you like, the holy grail of internet business, far better than one-off payments. This revenue repeats every month unless the subscriber cancels their subscription. 
it has a significant impact on business valuation. It will be given a higher metric by an investor than one-off per, uh, purchases. The revenue run rate is a very useful metric for early stage companies. Basically, it's the current monthly revenue multiplied by 12 to bring it up to an annual figure. The purpose of this is that if you've got a fast growing business, um, each month you hope the revenues are going to change substantially. Therefore, looking at the historic 12 months doesn't really tell you a lot. But if you multiply the current month by 12, you sort of get a picture of where you are and at least something like a base case of where you hope to be. The contribution margin per order or per customer uh, is calculated by the revenue minus direct variable costs divided by the number of orders. And what you're trying to look at is what element of a gross profit are you getting from each sale? Again, it's a critical piece of information for e-commerce e business and should be tracked weekly, if not daily. Now, the contribution margin after marketing, which is the CMAM, basically then adds the marketing expenses to the one we've just looked at. So it's revenue minus direct variable costs minus marketing expenses. So the inclusion of the marketing expenses really adds in the cost of the acquiring the customer. And when you're discussing contribution margin, it is important to understand whether or not marketing costs are included or not. The customer acquisition costs, CAC, another critical metric. Now, this should focus only on new customers. And you basically calculate it by marketing expenses divided by number of new customers. Now, there's a few other um, important acronyms you need to be at least aware of and understand. You'll hear the cost per uh, M, the CPM, which is the cost per thousand impressions. So it's the, you're, you're paying for your advertising every time a somebody has shown your ad then that's an impression. So once you've paid, a, there's been a thousand impressions, they don't have to do anything, they just have to see the page, then um, that's gonna cost you money. The CPC is the next stage after that, where they actually click on your ad to go to your site. So they, if you like, uh, take an action, and CPC is very often how uh, advertising is charged. And then the CPA is the cost per acquisition. So what's that costing you um, to uh, to actually acquire the customer. Now, the marketing spend, of course, may vary, and different marketing campaign types have different different metrics, some of which I've shown here. So again, you need to be aware of the sensitivities and indeed the complexities of this, the, the potential of this formula. The churn rate measures the rate at which customers cancel their subscription. So it's the total number of customers lost per month divided by the total number of customers. In order to grow your business, your new customer growth, of course, must exceed the number of customers who cancel, otherwise your business is shrinking. It's a another critical metric and its trend over the months is also important, particularly for a growing internet business. The burn rate and the runway are financial metrics which um, are looked at very closely, particularly by investors and by, in particular, venture capitalists. The burn rate is calculated by the average cost consumed by the business per month. So what is the monthly negative loss in cash terms for the business each month? Loss making businesses burn, use up cash. Now, if you divide the total cash holding if you divide the burn rate by the total cash holding, you'll tell you how many months of cash the company has, and that is called its runway. So you need to be both aware of both your business's burn rate and its runway. The lifetime value, LTV, calculates the lifetime value of a customer to a business. And you calculate this by uh, looking at the contribution margin after marketing, and you divide it by the churn rate. How much do they pay for the time they are subscribed? And the contribution margin per customer can be per year can be multiplied up by 12, obviously. Um, but make sure you're using contribution margin. Understand whether it includes marketing costs, but definitely do not use revenues for this calculation. 
the lifetime value divided by the customer acquisition cost ratio enables comparisons to be made between different companies. So, for instance, if the cost of acquiring a company is $25 and the lifetime value of that customer is $125, then the ratio is 5. And the higher the ratio, the better. And that's really what you're looking at, is how much, um, what is the ratio to the um, long lifetime value of the customer um, divided by the customer acquisition cost. When we look at payback, we're trying to see how many orders a customer has to place in order to pay back their cost of acquisition. So we divide the cost of acquisition by the contribution margin after marketing. Note that this assumes that repeat customers cost nothing, although indeed they may still click on ads and paid links when they return to the site. The viral coefficient is an interesting one. This is the measure of the number of new users the average customer generates for you. So you calculate it by the number of existing customers, multiply it by the number of invitations they send, and divide it then by the number of existing customers. Now, the viral coefficient is not simply the number of referrals a customer makes. It's actually the number of those referrals that convert into customers and that's an important distinction. So that's the key uh, metrics that you need to include in your um, e-commerce valuation model. Now what I've done is to, in order to help you to calculate those and to create something that you can bring into a model, I've created a simple Excel model which you can download. The, it has basically two parts. It's all on one sheet. First of all, you input the monthly data into the green cells for your website, for your conversions, for your customers, for the revenues, expenses and cash flows. Now, these all tie into what we've just been discussing. And all you have to do is put the key numbers into those cells. The outputs from the model, and don't worry about the triangles because I haven't put any content into the model, so it's blank, but that's where the formulas are. The output from the model will calculate the metrics that I've discussed in this lecture. Um, I've shown you the acronyms and I've also shown you the formulas so that you can see exactly where the data is coming from so you can track and understand the calculations. But this is where the, um, the data is um, going to be useful for you and the spreadsheet will enable you to calculate all this very straightforwardly by just putting in the inputs we've just explained. So that's it. The metrics discussed in this lecture will help you to monitor your e-commerce business and contribute to your valuation model. So that's a look at e-commerce valuation. I'm not going to go into it in endless depth. I could probably make a course on it on its own. But uh, if you're aware of some of these complexities, then you're a long way down the road to being able to build your own e-commerce valuation model.